Um, but I'm uh, excited to be there. We want to. Uh, um, one thing I want to focus on there uh, I named this tool Let It Crash because this is, I think, the main thing in Erlangs that I want to focus on. So, to introduce myself a little, uh, I'm a craftsman I'm doing mostly developments uh, uh, for people, custom developments uh, and consulting about the organization. I'm also doing a lot of open sources. Uh, I'm an Apache CouchDB co developer and member of the PMC. Uh, I'm also a developer uh, of many of those tools uh, in uh, Erlangs. And Python 2, I'm um, Jane Incarn author, uh, one of the main. Uh, Python web server uh, used today, and uh, I'm also a member of the Python Foundation. Uh, so, first, if it works, works better. If I plug it, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Not so much. Oh, yeah. 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 Okay. So. Uh, let it crash. First, what is the first thing you really need in your application today? When you develop uh, an application, when you develop an application for the web, or when you, when you develop an application for a bank, or when you develop an application to speak with your mobile, uh, you need a real reliability. And what's a reliable program? Uh, the first thing you really want uh, is that to, to have your program resistant to failure. Uh, if you don't want your program uh, crashing and trying to 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 um, catch any exception in your code. Because catching exception in your code is just a way to say, oh, I know this exception could happen, so I will try to catch it. And you can catch it at a level, and when it crashes at the level, you raise a uh, upper, and you try to catch that on the upper level, etc., etc. This is quite mission impossible. Um, the second thing you want uh, to have a really good program. Uh, is to be able to recover it very easily. When your program crash, the first thing you really want is to recover it. Uh, not to launch a new one, you want to uh, relaunch your code with the last, uh, last state in your application. If you were doing a transaction, if you were doing uh, a web server passing a session to another process, you want to be able to relaunch this process with the last state or the last transaction, or, the, or at least the last step in a transaction. Uh, another thing that you really want when you want uh, to, to program is to be able to uh, auto upgrade your code. So it's quite impossible to, to make your program without error. I don't know anybody uh, that, uh, that is able to make a, a program without error. You can try to make unit tests. Uh, unit tests are very fine, so I make unit tests year and year and year and year and year. But yeah, you know, your program will crash. It will happen. Uh, your program will crash. So what you really want when it happens is to be able to fix the program and relaunch it, relaunch your application without launching everything in your application. Just the point that crashed. And Erlang is very fine for that. Also, uh, today when you program in Python, when you program in Clojure, when you program in Java, when you program in anything, uh, the thing is, the first thing you, uh, you do is to um, put a supervisor in the, site, in the system. Uh, you put a supervisor in the system because your application will crash. And then you want uh, something that is able to relaunch it. And in most program in language, or in most framework, you are not able to do that from your application. And supervisors are good, but the thing is, you're relaunching your application from an external script. And by doing that, you re you're relaunching your application without knowing what it was doing. You don't know it was doing a transaction. You don't know it was launching a message to another. Uh, and the supervisor doesn't know because it's external to your application. The second thing you do, uh, because your application is not able to do that, because your framework is not able to do that, is to place on top of your supervisor, you place load balancer and proxy. Why? Because your machine can crash. Then you have a load balancer in your proxy that is able to root uh, your, uh, your user or your um, client to uh, another machine with the application. Uh, but the same, like with the supervisor, you are using an external tool and then you are not sharing any 
and instead uh, you uh, you're launching your application without knowing what it's well doing. In fact, the real problem that you're trying to solve and that we are all trying to solve is to stay alive, to, to make sure that your application stay alive. And this is the real problem you want to solve. And this is why uh, you really want to use Erlang's uh, or the DHP framework. Because Erlang by itself, this is only 30, 43 instructions, I think, and this is only 60 words in your language. Very easy to learn. Yeah, you can say syntax are extra, but just 43 instructions. Less than in C, less than in uh, PHP. Very easy to learn. The real thing you want to learn is uh, how the OTP platform works, how the OTP framework works. So, you want to stay alive. You want that your application to stay, uh, stay alive. Me too, I want to stay alive. Uh, and the first thing you are doing, that, uh, the first thing to do that is to isolate any process in your application. So, like you are launching thread on the system, you are launching process, uh, you can also launch OS process. And you are launching OS processes generally because you want to isolate uh, the script you are launching from your main application. So you can make sure that if your process crashes, it won't touch, it won't touch your application. And the same in Erlang. You can launch process. And process are like thread, uh, uh, at least a way to launch multiple instructions in the same thread, in the same stack of a thread. And each process is isolated, which means that P is uh, talking with P, which is talking with another process, which, uh, which is talking with another process, but they are all talking to each other, but they are all isolated each in the exact corner. They only pass message to each other. Which means that when a failure happens, so this process <coughs> crash, the other process can still continue to talk to each other. This is what um, the isolation gives you, uh, this is a way to, to resist to the failure. And the other way you want to resist the failure, because your process is isolated, when you fix the error, you can launch a new process with zero fixes. And then you start to talk with other processes very easily. This is where the OTP framework works. And isolation is done because you have independent process, because you don't share any memory between processes, you don't share any state, you don't, share, you don't have any global variable. When you, you are using a global variable in your language, in your script language, what you're doing is simply saying to your system, hey, stop, look at the state of this variable, give it the value. Okay, you read the value, stop it at, at this point, and give the value to another process. Stop it. D did you read the value? Yeah, it's fine. So you stop, you stop at the execution of your program. You don't want to use that. And this is why your process needs to be isolated, don't share any variable. You don't share any memory between each process. You don't want to lock. And you still need to talk between each process. And for that, in Erlang, we will use a, a message passing. A message passing is basically a way to send a binary or uh, integer or a, uh, any data structure that uh, is able to understand your program to the other uh, using message passing. Um, the other way to, um, to have the isolation to make sure that you, you will be able to recover a process is to make sure that the process will fail fast. Because the faster you fail, the faster you will know it, and the faster you will be able to react. And this is why uh, what uh, Erlang is providing to you. Um, the, other way, uh, the other thing that you really want is a way to supervise, to supervise each process independently. Um, and because you are because each process is independent, you are able to recover them independently without uh, any structure. So, what does it mean by let it crash? Um, in Erlang, you have also a thing uh, which is called uh, pattern matchings, and you are expecting some value from, uh, from the result of, of your function, or you are expecting some value that will be passed uh, as a variable to your function. And uh, the first case is you are trying to connect a socket and you are expecting uh, that the response will return you a socket with an OK comma socket. Uh, but if you get an error, then because you weren't expecting this value, your program will simply crash. And 
Don't try. Here we, we didn't try to try catch. You can do it now, but this is not advice. And you don't need that. You want it to let it crash. And because it crashed, then maybe you can do something better. Maybe tell to to your to your application to to look at another machine, or maybe just relaunch a connection. The other way is is using a pattern machine. Here we are receiving message coming to your process, and we have a message that says say message, and we are saying the message. We are waiting for quit, and we quit. And also you will throw a new. Here we are simply using message uh, pattern matching to match a message, and if we match a message, we um, we execute a function. Uh, if not, we are raising an error, and this error, most of the time, we crash the process, and the same on the bottom. Uh, and so, reliability is given because you have process evaluation, because you have pattern matching. And uh, pattern matching is mostly just a way to accept that you are waiting for it, a result, that you are expecting for a result. This is just an asset, like in C or like in other language. Um, reality is given because you have a way to supervise the process. You know when your process will crash, and because you know when your process will crash, you are able to do something with it. Maybe it, it will be to relaunch a process, or maybe it will uh, try to just send a message to the administrator or the operator to say, hey, something happened, we need to look at whatever we want. And supervision, supervision by itself is not enough. You want a way to relaunch process. Uh, you want a way to recover the process, to relaunch it. And uh, this is given... <coughs> This is given by uh, by the process realization. Uh, so it wasn't supposed to be there, but okay. Uh, so here is a, an example of an OTP application because OTP is a framework. Uh, because you want to uh, because it, OTP is a framework, it proposes you a way. Yeah. Excuse me. What means OTP? What is the abbreviation then for the you know, operation uh, telecommunication platform? Mm -hmm. Operation to, uh, operational telecommunication. Uh, I think it's open telecom platform. Open telecom. Open. Yeah, open telecom. Yeah. And what is it? A framework like a set of libraries or what is it's it? A, yeah. No so it's a framework to build distributed applications written okay. in Erlang. Yeah. Uh, yeah. At least really considered part of, of, of the Erlang ecosystem. So. Yeah. This is a way to yeah, this is a way to distribute execution between machines, mostly uh, okay. and recover process. Uh, so, because this is a framework, uh, it also describes a way to, to design your application. Uh, it gives you a general pattern machine. Uh, so, it, it gives you a general pattern. Uh, so, here is a, an example of an application. I will show you an application that is able to um, to launch an application and to connect to other applications. Because Erlang is not only a way to recover a process or to distribute. Uh, Execution, uh, yeah, this is a way to distribute exec uh, the execution. So you need to, to, to be able to know which node, uh, where where node is launched, on how to launch a node. And this application will show an, a simple example to connect to your application and to recover the nodes, for, to, to get the nodes from this application, uh, basically a gossip, um, a gossip protocol. And um, Arno will show you the same version uh, in uh, Elixir just after. Uh, better than my, uh, the, the, the one I provide. So, generally, your application, when you are using this tool, Rebar, Rebar, Rebar sorry, is a tool to, uh, to, create, uh, uh, to create application from complex, to also compile your application by being the C, uh, C code coming with it, and by being the release. And the release, I will show you later, uh, what is it? But uh, it already, a uh, release is a way to deploy your application uh, when you are using the OTP platform. So generally you have the EBIN for the which contain your uh, compiled code and the SSC folder which contain your um, ELON code. Uh, 
Um, the first thing you, you are doing when you are creating an application is describing it. And this is all what is a, an apps.src about. We are describing the application. And here we are giving, we are describing the application called Nanoring. And we are giving a name, Nanoring. And we are giving a version, uh, we just tell you don't care. We are giving the application that will not be launched by this uh, application, the dependency, mostly. The model uh, which will launch the application and the models that are in the application. So we have a model, we have four models in this application. What is NanoRing? Uh, NanoRing is a simple demo uh, that uh, connecting nodes between themselves using a gossip. Uh, uh, um, with the exception uh, from the other example. Uh, <coughs> that uh, for now it's using uh, Erlang distribution and connecting directly each node to each other. Um, so the other things that we are describing in the navigation is the, is the supervisor. So a supervisor is a simple Erlang modules and generally So this is a supervisor. We are uh, so this is generally the structure of your Erlang source. On top, we are describing the module names. Uh, here, we are describing describing a behavior, which is a supervisor. And the supervisor will be responsible of supervising the process you are launching in the application. We export uh, an init, uh, function start links. We we start the function and we execute the init function in the process. Um, the interesting thing in this file is that you can describe how many times uh, you, are, you expect that your uh, process will be alive, your permanence, and how many times we try to restart it if it crash. So we, are, we have a real rule to describe the supervision here. We are able to, to say, okay, uh, this process crashed. Uh, one, two, three times. And how many times I want to relaunch it? Here yeah, we are relaunch it any time. Uh, but you can say I want to relaunch it only three times. And uh, you are uh, describing uh, the time uh, between uh, between each crash you want to relaunch the application. Uh, everything is. Uh, Okay. Um, the other interesting things is a uh, Jet server in the Erlang OTP platform. The Jet server uh, is a way to launch a process and uh, to launch a, um, a process here, yeah, on which we can call a function and waiting for sequence results, then call it to a function. And when you cast a call, when you cast a call, you don't wait any result, you just send a call to your process and it will do some things. And you can also reset events, etc. But better to show you um, <coughs> a simple example if it works. Okay. So I guess I am right now. No. So you're in the top.
So here I'm, I'm launching two, um, two shells, uh, each with uh, one address that we, uh, I, will, I will be able to join. The first one is NT uh, at localhost, and the second one is NT2 at localhost. And I'm launching the application here. I already launched it here on these nodes, and I will launch it on the second node here. Um, then uh, the very cool thing you can do is to connect to uh, the other applications. And I can do that. Um, by telling the address of the other. We crash here, okay. Here you can say, the uh, second one say, uh, not in here, your class is up, and I can do something with that. Um, we already exchanged address, so I can say, give me the, the number of nodes. So, And um, I can just quit this one because I have crashed and I crash and this one already knows that this no other node crashed and I can I, I, uh, hopefully do some things and I can say all nodes, all nodes that have still the address of all the nodes that have been connected and I can see who is alive. And I'm not more alive today. So the second time I will release this node, we try to connect to all the nodes here. It has been connected to NT and to NT1 and whatever. And uh, you are able to know in real time when the node is down, when the node is up. And this is a simple thing I wanted to show you. Start. So, in summary, Elox provides you process isolation, free supervision, and you don't need any external program. You are able to supervise processes, you are able to supervise connected nodes, um, so you are able to uh, distribute your work, and when not going down, to rebalance the work to other nodes. You are able to recover failed processes, to do other upgrades, something I could have shown you. And and that's one. Yeah, I um, wanted to show one of the things. Anybody who today um, is um, trying to program a synchronous program to do a synchronous program, and uh, generally you are using a demo proofs. Uh, that's fine. Uh, but what if your code would just block waiting on message in the process, while the other process are uh, using your pro uh, your are doing another operation, for example. Here yeah, we are using uh, Acne, which is uh, my HTTP um, client in Arms. And I'm connecting to FrameFest to get the list of all language, and uh, I'm launching it asynchronously. And what I will wait is to wait for chunks of the data, waiting for a connection. Uh, if the status of the connection is OK, continue to loops over the message and continue my execution. And this is what I'm doing here. So the first time I'm connected to, to the URI, uh, I'm getting a response stream. And I'm starting to reset any message. So it can take for a long time. The good thing with that is that you only your process will wait. Other processes will be able to work uh, in power, uh, not really in parallel, and depends on if they are not or not, the CPU or not, but they will be able to work. Um, Second time you say, uh, I'm putting the, the status and the reason. So here we receive uh, the HTTP status, and then I can do something else. 
for example, I could loop over any message. So I'm getting the status message and I'm looping to receive the other message. The other message will be the header and the other message will be the body, etc. Et 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 just until the end. And uh, by doing that, you can, for example, uh, doing a uh, you can stream any JSON, just waiting for message, passing your, uh, your, your passing the message you get, you got, sending it to another application, etc. Et 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 and voila. If you have any question, yeah. Uh, do you are um, uh, also developing Python? So do you have do you have there? I don't know, maybe library solutions or something like that. I don't think it's, maybe it's not necessary to have this directly in the language. But this this kind of system glue thing. Yeah. Do so you, do, do you have projects in this direction for Python, for instance? Um, yeah. Uh, mostly uh, the. The first thing that uh, you should know is that it's impossible to port the along uh, the along paradigm to Python. Uh, the actual model can't work in Python because you have, for example, the GIL that is locking any threads, etc. Mm -hmm. So it, it can't work. Uh, the funny things are uh, the experience I'm, I've done uh, this three months, uh, since three months is to port the Go concurrency model to Python. Uh, using memory sharing uh, and passing uh, passing data from one process to the other, OS processes to bypass the game. Um, yeah, it's not works, but uh, I wouldn't advise someone to use it. If you really want concurrency, some like the Go concurrency model, just use Go. This is really done for that. And I, I just, uh, you, uh, uh, in Clojure, you have now Clo Core Async, which does also implement the Go yeah. model. And, um, but you're, you're also a uh, in yeah. Python today, but um, this is not the same as, as you can do in uh, in Arons. In Arons, you just uh, uh, coding uh, without uh, knowing that uh, you're just waiting for message, <laughs> and this is quite more simple. All the all the when you're by building your application, you're just uh, doing a, some kind of Lego Lego binding, mm -hmm. just putting your data and putting some models to, to talk to your data. It's quite easier to understand. But in Clojure, you can mostly do that with a new async pattern. Yeah, well, there was also an interesting talk by uh, Richie where he says that uh, there must be more like... He does not believe in the Erlen thing, so I, I don't know. I, I, I didn't never program with it, so I can understand. But uh, what, he, what he really likes about the thing in this, this kind of way, the way you build the system and then it's resilient and when one crash you have the supervision things. And uh, he thinks kind of maybe we should have a kind of language of systems to just do that, not necessarily but or everything from the, the, from the start to, to, to the, you know, in Erlang you do everything in Erlang. And so he's, the, the question is, is it possible to do this kind of uh, how you would you see, for instance, in the Python setting, of, I don't know, so maybe a kind of server, or I don't know what that would kind of provide this, this uh, you would have a lot of little you, you, Python you, you threads, can, can and they crash, and then how, how would you... You can, you can use both worlds. Uh, there is an, uh, a guy, which uh, is a French guy, but living in Italy, uh, building Cloudy, Cloudy hmm. uh, which is mixing both worlds. Uh, you distribute uh, execution yeah. to different nodes, but uh, you can launch your process in Python or uh, you know in another language and it's supervised by the by the by the Erlang process yeah. and the message are sent back to, to the other. So it's use it's using Erlang to build the system out of yeah. building blocks which are not necessarily Erlang. And to pass message because a thing that you can't have in Java for example from the start yeah. you know, when you're passing binary from one process to the other you don't pass all the data. Yeah. And do agree. Where, where in Java you are passing it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Java is just copy each chunk of memory to, to the other process, to the other frame. So That's cool. <coughs> you know well Python and Erlang. When do you use which pro which programming language? Now I'm, I'm using a lot of uh, of languages. Um, no, but, that's but, <laughs> but yeah, but okay. Well, when do you choose to Erlang instead of Python, or Python instead of Erlang? Or what is typical use case? Let's put it this way, maybe. Uh, mostly when uh, I, I just need one thread and synchronous programming, yeah. I'm using Python. When I don't see um, any advantage to have uh, synchronous programming or to do distributed to, 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 to these things. Yeah. 
even if it's possible in Python. Uh, I have a lot of examples where I'm writing my code, not, not only in Erlang, but uh, where I, I've done it first in Python, now, uh, where it is a nightmare to, to just under an event loop, etc. Et mm -hmm. Where, uh, when you have a bug, uh, you have to look in your event loop where it happens, uh, or where, where you raise or catch the exception. Stuff like it. Uh, this is mostly the why, uh, for example, Ubuntu decided to to abandon uh, Python and to go to for Go, because uh, at least for Juju, uh, they stop it to to uh, to care uh, about looking for a bug. They are, they had in uh, in Juju, they they weren't about to 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 to, to find the bug, so they just rewrite it in Go. So. so I'm just using Python today for synchronous code or just a simple web server because most of the web apps uh, don't need uh, more than synchronous program. So next question, why the difference between Go and Erlang? Why did you choose Erlang in this case? When you say you prefer Go? I'm using Go for a lower level program. Go or Rust today. Okay, but so uh, in the case you mentioned for Ubuntu, they, they use yeah, and, and, and for example, for Erlang, I have uh, a thing coming, uh, which is Gaffer, which is a uh, process supervision, and and an LC uh, uh, supervision. And I'm writing in Go, but uh, all the orchestration will be announced. Yeah, in your demo, you showed the supervisor config, and then you killed one process, and it didn't get restarted, or it didn't seem to get restarted. Yes, Maybe I didn't didn't really understand what we we were doing, but you, had, you showed us the supervisor config, which is currently uh, well, we're just in the shell. So uh, here, uh, times. Uh, the, the shell crashed, but uh, the the process behind that uh, didn't crash. Uh, it's uh, it's supervised. I believe. Uh, you, you took one of the nodes down, the the first one. Yeah. So uh, when I connected the nodes. They, they, they were about to know about each other, and when I crash a node, he get a message from uh, from uh, from the uh, Erlang domain name server, and he get a message saying, "Do not this down, uh, do something with that." Uh, actually, he, he has simulated uh, a node crash yeah. and not uh, an internal Erlang process. Yeah, right. like uh, if you have uh, but, uh, a complete uh, node failure. So. Yeah. He, 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 if the hardware uh, is down, uh, yeah. nothing more. Yeah, but you can eventually, if the machine is not down, you can eventually uh, uh, restart your nodes very much. This is a lot of stuff. And, and within one process, there's no parallelism or no concurrency. All the parallelism you get, if you have, you, have, you instantiate multiple processes. Yeah. That's where you get your parallelism. Yeah. yeah. Okay. At least concurrency. Or it's yeah. just an accident yeah. because it's running yeah. on different uh, CPUs that uh, you have to Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.